It's a pleasure to introduce Dr. Dalal Aziz, who's evaluated with Halton Healthcare in Ontario. Dr. Dalal Aziz has a subspecialty in breast surgical oncology. Her practice encompasses surgical oncology, advanced laparoscopy, as well as endoscopy. She works at Milton District Hospital in Halton Healthcare, where she helped build the breast program. She's interested in research and sits on the research ethics board. She's a strong advocate for empowering female physicians and having a more gender balanced physician representation at the leadership level. Her hobbies include hiking and snowshoeing. Welcome Dalal, who will be speaking today on evolving technologies in preoperative localization. Thank you. Good morning. And I would like to thank the organizing committee for the opportunity to present. Uh, in the next few minutes, I'll be discussing the emerging technologies in preoperative localization of non-palpable breast lesions. Basically, we will be comparing wire localization, which has been present since 1976, versus the non-wire localization techniques, like the I-125 radioactive seed, which was launched in 2001, the radar reflector, which has been around since 2014, the magnetic seed, which has been in the market since 2016, the MOLI recently approved in 2021, as well as the radio frequency identification tag, which uh, has been around since 2017. With the increased use of screening modalities, we are finding more and more non-palpable lesions that require localization in order to remove them. The use of localization techniques provides an opportunity for institutions to seek multidisciplinary input and to promote value-based patient-centered care. It's important to realize though that there has been no demonstrated statistically significant difference in surgical outcome when comparing wire versus non-wire localization devices for the breast. And the rate of positive margins is not related to the localization method, but rather to the disease itself. As we all know, DCIS and calcifications tend to have higher positive margin rates. So is there a perfect modality? So far, this remains to be determined. There, has, there are many trials currently uh, comparing the different localization techniques. Probably there is no perfect one at this point. It all depends on what do we need from our technique with the evolving technologies in breast cancer, the increase the advancement in surgical techniques in uh, chemotherapy and radiation, we are requiring more and more of our localization techniques. We need now not only to localize the breast, but to localize the lymph nodes in the axilla for targeted axillary dissection. We need the ability to bracket the lesions for arcoplastic resection. We would like our localization, te localization techniques to be used in the neoadjuvant setting, and, MRI, and this requires them to be MRI compatible. We have to take into consideration the cost versus the workflow improvement, and uh, last but not least, patient satisfaction. This is the wire. You can see here two hook wires bracketing an area of calcifications. It has been around for a long time. It's tried and true, reliable, effective, and relatively has a low cost. Currently, it's the only tool that can be placed under MRI guidance. The drawback is that there is a very low migration rate between zero to 1.8%. It can dislodge and it's not so great in the axilla. It does lead to workflow issues and there can be delays in radiology, which would lead to delays in surgery. Patients experience higher level of anxiety and decreased satisfaction with the wire. It has to be placed on the day of the procedure. They have to come earlier. They are fasting. They often faint. They're anxious. The non-wire localization techniques offer the advantage of decoupling localization from surgery. So you can start your surgery at 8 a.m. in the morning. There is less delay and less workflow disruption. There is increased patient scheduling flexibility and patient satisfaction. However, they do require an initial acquisition cost and ongoing cost, which potentially could be offset by the operative cost saving. This is the I-125 radioactive seed. You see two seeds bracketing in an area in the breast. It's encased in a titanium seed. It has to be placed within 14 days of the procedure. And to check it, you use the Geiger-Muller survey. Uh, bracketing is successful with the radioactive seed, but you need a two centimeter distance between the lesions 
it is cost saving, it's not very expensive. The drawback is that the seed can migrate if placed in hematomas and it can be suctioned during surgery. Also, it cannot be used in the neoadjuvant setting. It does require a radioactive seed program, which has lots of regulation. You need emergency protocols, especially if you lose your seed, which can lead to loss of the license to operate the program. And it's not so great in multi-site hospitals if the specimen has to be transported to a different site for pathologic analysis. This is a radar reflector. You can see the uh, small seed with two antenna and a breast uh, case, and the machine and the detector. It's a radio frequency reflector localization device called the Savvy Scout. It's approved for use in breast and lymph nodes and can be placed in the neoadjuvant setting. It provides an audible feedback as well as a numerical feedback, so you can read your distance from the lesion and measure your margins. Bracketing is successful. Again, you need a two centimeter distance between the two lesions and it is MRI compatible. The drawback is there can be difficulty of detection if there is a hematoma or if the reflector is placed greater than six centimeter from the surface. It can be deactivated if you hit the reflector with a coterie or burn it. This is a max seed, a small seed. This is the applicator that's used to deliver the seed. It's a tiny metal seed, paramagnetic, approved for use in the breast and in the lymph node. The Centimac detector probe displays audio as well as numerical feedback. Bracketing is successful. Again, you need a two centimeter distance between the lesions. The drawback is that the depth sensing is only up to four centimeter. It does cause a significant MRI artifact. So in the neoadjuvant setting, that can be a problem if you need to follow the patient with MRIs. And you need special non-metal OR instruments for uh, the magnetic seat. This is the Molly. This is the device, the Molly wand, and the small Molly clip. It was developed in Toronto, launched in the market, and approved in 2021. It's a 3.2 millimeter marker. And to find it, we use the Molly wand. It can be implanted within 30 days of the procedure. It offers the same advantage as the max seed. However, you do not need to use special non-metal OR instruments as the magnetic field is not as strong. The drawback again is that it causes an MRI artifact. The radio frequency identification tag or localizer, this is the tiny one to find it. It's uh, developed by Hologic. It uses radio wave signals to identify breast lesions. The tag is enclosed in a glass casing. It has a unique identification number and it is approved to remain for long term. The handheld reader uses audible sounds and reads the distance as well as the tag identification number. And this can be helpful for bracketing. Let's say you can use one number to localize the cancer where you need wider margins, another number for the non-cancerous lesion where you can go on smaller margins. The challenges is that there can be difficulty in placement as the applicator has a large gauge. This is especially true in dense breasts. Sometimes you cannot place it in smaller lesions and you have to be placed it next to the lesion. It needs a six centimeter distance from the surface and the tag can break as it is enclosed in glass. Also, it does cause a significant MRI artifact. So what's the future? Currently, there's an explosion of localization techniques and most companies are coming with the second, third, and fourth generation devices. There is increased competition. Hopefully this will lead to reduced cost. Uh, Three-dimensional tumor localization is being investigated. This will be quite exciting once it comes into the market. And once we have the data, the survival data from the target axillary dissection uh, studies, if this becomes widely adopted, we will need techniques that localize the lymph nodes which is uh, best done in the neoadjuvant setting when the lymph node is large and juicy. Why do we need to change? The wire works, it's cheap, it's effective. There is no difference so far identified in recurrence rate or survival, no matter what method of localization, what method of localization you use. So the need to change is based on a multidisciplinary discussion between the surgeon, the radiologist, taking into consideration multiple factors like the need, what do we need from our localization technique, the ease of use, the physician preference, uh, as well as the cost saving and patient satisfaction. 
at the end, I would like th uh, to thank you and thank Dr. Shaheen for putting together this amazing program and hope you enjoy it.